Hi there, and welcome to the Marias Pass HO scale layout. Today I want to discuss how I program my locomotives for multiple unit and distributed power consists, which are common on the mountain grade mainline that I model. For this style of operation, it's important that I program my locomotives to work well together so they don't fight each other or push cars off the rails as trains head through switches and tight curves. There are really only four CVs, otherwise known as configuration variables, that need to be programmed, and I will be programming the locomotives today on my Digitrax DCC system. Let's get into it. Step one is limiting the amount of load compensation, otherwise known as BEMF, that is programmed into the DCC decoders by default. Load compensation is a feature in most DCC decoders which counteracts the forces working against the motor. You can see this demonstrated when I set the locomotive to 30 speed steps and attempt to stop it. When it encounters a resisting force, the decoder provides more power to the motor to fight against it, and the wheels continue to turn and slip even though the weight of the locomotive is being held in place and I have not increased the throttle setting. I want to turn this feature way down, so on my Digitrax DT400 series throttle, I select the locomotive to be programmed, and then hit the program button until the locomotive number appears, signifying that I will be programming that locomotive on the mainline. On the left, I select CV212, which is the configuration variable for load compensation in this Soundtrack Tsunami 2 decoder. Other decoders use different CVs to control load compensation, and you can find a short list of those CVs and their value ranges in the description below. CV212 for this locomotive can be programmed to a value between 0 and 255, with 255 being the maximum, and I use the right knob to select a low value. In this case, I choose a value of 30, but it could be even lower. This is something you'll have to experiment with. Then hit enter, and once it says good, you can exit this screen and operate the locomotive. You can now see that when I attempt to stop the locomotive, the wheels stop turning until I manually crank up the throttle. As we'll see, this compliance is really handy for speed matching and running multiple unit consists. Additionally, low or completely disabled load compensation encourages more realistic train handling so that going up a grade, trains require more throttle input than when on level ground or going down a grade. Now that load compensation is limited, it's time to adjust the speeds. With default settings, I think the locomotive moves way too fast, so we're going to limit the speed of the locomotive using a simple three-point speed curve. The three-point speed curve is determined by three CVs. The minimum motor voltage is set by CV2, the mid voltage is set by CV6, and the max voltage is set by CV5. The values you can program into each of these CVs range from 0 to 255, and this will be true for most decoders. From the factory, the locomotive comes programmed with a maximum top speed. In other words, CV5, the max voltage, is programmed to a value of 255. So I want to reduce the values, primarily of CV6 and CV5, to lower the slope of the speed curve. I like to keep the speed curve linear, so whatever value I choose for the mid voltage, I will double it for the max voltage. To start, I program a small value into CV2, or the start voltage. I want this number to be low, but still high enough that the locomotive will start moving at 1 or 2% throttle. Usually this can be programmed to a value of 1 or 2, but with load compensation turned down, it might require a slightly higher value. Next, I program a value of 60 into CV6, the mid voltage. I set the mid voltage CV so that half throttle, the locomotive appears to move at approximately half of my maximum track speed. And finally, I program a value of 120 into CV5, which is the max voltage. Now the locomotive appears to move at a much more reasonable speed for my layout. Now that we've changed the CVs for load compensation and adjusted the three-point speed curve, 
we can check if the locomotives are even remotely speed matched to one another. To do this, select the leading locomotive on the right hand side and the locomotive to MU or multiple unit on the left. Then hit the MU button and select enter. Now you can adjust the right hand throttle knob and see if the units run similarly together. If the speeds are way off, you can adjust the minimum, mid, and maximum voltage CVs like we did before on just one of the units until it runs like the other. But keep in mind that one of the main benefits of reducing load compensation is that the locomotives don't need to be perfectly speed matched. They just need to be within the same ballpark. Even if they run 10 to 20 scale miles per hour different, they will probably operate just fine together because the decoder won't resist the speed differential. It appears that these two locomotives run well enough together, so now it's time to consist a train with distributed power. So with the locomotive speed match now, I want to create a distributed power crude oil train. And so I want to mix the locomotives we were working with, those two ST70 ACEs, with another locomotive. This was one that we didn't see, but has also been similarly speed matched. This does not have a Soundtrax decoder. I believe it has uh, Digitrax in it, but I, I did sort of the same methodology. So what I'll do is I'll call up um, BNSF 8438, which is our lead locomotive here on the right hand side. You can see the arrow is to the right, indicating that it's moving to the right. And on the rear of the train, we want Montana Railing 4401. Um, so it doesn't matter the order you do this in, but this locomotive is going to be on the rear of our train. And so with this unit over here and facing the opposite direction, as you can see by that arrow there, we have our locomotive on this side selected. We see the flashing smoke there, meaning that this is the locomotive that we're currently selected. We'll hit loco, excuse me, no we won't. We'll hit MU, I hit the wrong button, and then we'll hit the plus button here to add 4401. And you can see now it's consisted as it says right there. And then on the left hand side, I'm gonna select with loco, uh, it's address 68 is the trailing unit right here. And its decoder direction is actually already reversed, which is a little confusing. Um, so this arrow on the controller is actually gonna face the same way as our lead unit, um, despite the fact that the locomotive is facing the other way. Uh, so again, we'll select over here, MU, we'll plus that. And now this whole train is controlled by our lead locomotive, 8438, as you can see. So um, sometimes I'll leave the distributed power unit, the rear DPU on the left knob and operate that separately. But since I've got them all on uh, one address, I'm gonna use a different throttle. And I'm gonna show you how the train operates over the layout. With load compensation turned down, you'll see it takes nearly 20 speed steps to get this relatively light, empty oil train started up the grade. With this programming scheme that we've covered today, you can see that the coupler slack is out on the head end of the train, but pushed in on the rear end of the train. This is exactly the gentle train handling that I'm seeking so that lighter cars aren't pushed off or pulled off the tracks. As we move up the line to Columbia Falls, the mainline grade is not particularly steep, but you'll see it still requires 80% throttle to maintain a reasonable track speed, even with three locomotives. In the scene of Essex, the train is cresting the grade at 45% throttle, 
and you'll see that when I provide a little extra resistance, the locomotive wheel stop turning because I haven't provided the extra throttle required to overcome that force. But importantly, even if the load becomes too strong for the present throttle setting, the head end and rear distributed power unit comply with the resistance, which prevents extreme slack action and derailments. The most substantial demonstration of the programming we've done today is the speed differential between this train heading upgrade versus downgrade on the same section of track. Here, the light oil train is heading upgrade with a throttle setting of 60 speed steps. You can see that train speed is low and it continues to drop due to the nearly 3% grade along this section of track. However, when we see the same train heading down the grade at the same throttle setting, it moves much faster because the motors are being assisted by gravity. During an operating session, this train's operator would have to watch their throttle settings heading upgrade versus downgrade to make sure they maintain a safe track speed. Anyway, that's all for this video. With just four CVs, I'm able to substantially change the driving characteristics of my locomotives, and it makes it much easier to mix and match multiple unit and distributed power consists. If you have questions or comments, please leave those below. And as always, thank you so much for watching, stay tuned, and I'll see you next time.